Hi, my name is Nayland Apana. I'm a specialist gynaecologist in Hamilton in New Zealand. Welcome to my series of educational videos in gynaecology. Today we're going to learn about laparoscopies. Just what is a laparoscopy? A laparoscopy is an examination of your abdomen using a telescope. This is done under a general anesthetic. There are two ways of inserting the telescope. I use an instrument called a varies needle. A small incision is made in the belly button and the needle is passed through into the abdomen. Air is then passed through this needle into the abdomen. Once there is sufficient air in the abdomen, an instrument is passed into the abdomen and a telescope passed through this. The air in the abdomen compresses the bowel and allows me to see things easily. I can see your womb, ovaries, fallopian tubes and other abdominal organs including the bowel, liver, stomach, gallbladder, etc. One, two or three further small cuts are made in your abdomen to allow instruments into the abdomen. If nothing untoward is found, no further procedure is undertaken. If any abnormality is found and does not involve removing any organs, I will continue with the procedure laparoscopically. If the treatment involves removal of an organ, we will stop at that stage and perform the operation at a later date, unless of course something life-threatening is found which must be treated immediately. Procedures that are commonly done through the laparoscope include removal of ovarian cysts, treatment of endometriosis, division of adhesions, removal of ovaries, removal of fibroids and hysterectomy operations. I will have videos of each one of these procedures on my website. All the following risks that I will discuss are possible with any laparoscopic procedures. So just what are the risks of a laparoscopy? Any operation has anesthetic risks, but the risks of anesthetic problems in a fit, healthy woman at an elective procedure are minimal. Any operation has the risk of bleeding and infection. Bleeding is very rare. Infection rates are about 2%, and the majority of these infections will be belly button infections, but this can vary from mild infection to a full-blown sepsis. Laparoscopic surgery is regarded as the cleanest of all procedures. The risks of this procedure are minimal, but any organ in the abdomen can be damaged during surgery. The organs most at risk of damage are bowel, blood vessels, the ureter, and the bladder. If there is significant risk of damage to your bowel, I will arrange for you to have bowel preparation prior to your surgery and arrange for a bowel surgeon to be on standby to help with your procedure. I will discuss each risk in more detail. Bowel injuries Approximately half of all bowel injuries occur during entry and the rest occur during the operation. Entry related bowel injuries are mostly cuts and intraoperative injuries are mostly thermal that is, related to the use of diathermy. Most bowel injuries are not diagnosed during surgery. Delay in diagnosis can have major consequences. Urinary tract injuries. Firstly, ureteric injuries. Pelvic surgery is the most common cause of ureteric injuries. It is becoming more common as a result of the increasing number of gynecologic procedures that are being performed. Bladder injuries. The most common type of urinary injury during laparoscopy is bladder perforation. Most injuries occur during hysterectomy operations. Bladder injuries may occur during insertion of instruments, dissection of the bladder during gynecologic operations, or as a result of thermal energy. Abdominal wall vascular injuries. Injuries involving the inferior epigastric vessel are the most common type of vascular complication. These injuries can occur when the lateral ports are inserted. Visualization of the vessels from within helps to avoid this. However, sometimes these vessels cannot be seen. Postoperative hematomas and abscess formation may result from this. Hernia at the site of the abdominal wall troca. A hernia occurs when the abdominal contents push out through the small incisions within the abdomen. They rarely occur in incisions up to 1 cm in diameter. All incisions more than 1 cm in diameter are sutured in the deeper layers to prevent this occurring. 
Delay in diagnosis can have major consequences. Major vascular injuries. Major vascular injuries are rare and may be related to the varies needle, troca, or energy source. This includes the aorta, vena cava, or the common iliac vessels. It can be catastrophic. Pneumoperitoneum related complications. Emphysema means the presence of gas under the skin. This usually resolves spontaneously and is due to gas leaking out around the port sites, but outside the peritoneum. Or when the varies needle has not reached the peritoneal cavity, especially in obese patients. Gas embolism. This is a rare but mortal complication. It results from the introduction of gas through the varies needle into the large veins. Postoperative shoulder pain. Both the diaphragm and the shoulder tip are supplied by the phrenic nerve. Irritation of the diaphragm causes your brain to think you have pain in your shoulder tips. Valval edema. This occurs especially in patients in whom adhesion barrier solutions have been used, with drainage into the valval area being the cause. Edema may also occur in other areas in the abdomen, dependent on the position in which you are lying, when the fluid gravitates towards those areas. Complications related to anesthesia and patient position. Nerve injuries. Transient nerve injuries may occur during any procedure with positioning, affecting the brachial plexus, common perineal nerve, and also the saphenous nerve. Other complications. Cardiac arrhythmias. Heart arrhythmias may occur with any general anesthetic. Venous thrombosis. Prolonged operation time and the restricting effect of the intraperitoneal pressure on venous return may lead to venous embolism. We therefore use SCD stockings, which pump blood in your calves throughout the procedure. Port site metastases. Port site metastases is the transfer of cancerous cells in patients with cancer in the abdomen through the ports. After the operation, when the anesthetic has worn off, you may be in pain. The pain can be a strong wind-like pain, which may be felt in your abdomen, neck and shoulders. You may also develop severe shoulder tip pain. This is because the diaphragm is bruised, but is supplied by the same nerve as your shoulder tip, and your brain thinks that your shoulder is sore. Pain is usually proportional to what has been treated. You may also have significant bruising. Small blood vessels in the abdomen occasionally burst when the skin is distended. Usually, this isn't painful, but can be quite scary. If I expect you to have significant pain, you will have a patient-controlled analgesia pump inserted called a PCA, during which you will be able to self-administer pain relief when it's needed. You will be shown how to do this. Very rarely, you may have a catheter left in your bladder. This happens if the bladder is manipulated a fair bit during the operation and is usually left in for about 24 hours. You may have a tube sticking out of your tummy for drainage, this is left in if there is more than the average bleeding at the operation, merely as a precautionary measure. You must not drive or operate machinery for at least 24 hours after a general anesthetic, preferably 48. It is essential that you are not alone the first night after your operation. You should not drive until you can sit comfortably in the seat, with the seat belt across you. You should be able to turn your body as though to reverse, and you must be able to do an emergency stop. If you have more than a diagnostic laparoscopy, you may need to stay for a night or two. You should try to have three days of rest with no heavy lifting or strenuous exercise. You should be aware that you might need a week to ten days off after laparoscopy, especially if treatment has been performed. In general, there is little bleeding after a laparoscopy. You should use a sanitary towel initially and then tampons if there is no discomfort and the bleeding is not too heavy. If you have heavy bleeding, bad pains, a smelly vaginal discharge, or a temperature, you should contact me or your doctor. It is important to prevent any infection after your operation. Good personal hygiene is important. The day after your operation, you should take a bath or shower and remove the plasters on your cuts. Check that the cuts are clean and dry. This will help them heal. Only cover your cuts if they continue to appear moist. Where possible, Continue with a daily bath or shower. I also advise that you do not have sexual intercourse for one week, or at least until any bleeding has stopped. After a laparoscopy, there is a possibility of getting a urine infection. Watch out for symptoms of a cystitis, 
which are burning and frequency in passing urine. And if it does occur, drink plenty of fluid. If symptoms persist, please contact me. On discharge from hospital, I very rarely perform just a diagnostic laparoscopy. However, if this is done, it is usually done as a day stay. However, most patients will undergo treatment at the same time and will need to stay at least one night in hospital. If you have problems such as bad pain, increased bleeding, temperature, or generally feeling unwell, please contact me. I will review at my rooms at two weeks and then six weeks after the operation. Please call and schedule the appointment at your convenience. All laparoscopies are videotaped, and these tapes form part of your medical notes and are retained by me. If you have any problems, please call me directly. I would rather you call me 10 times for nothing than not call me one important time. Specific laparoscopic procedures are tackled in individual videos, which can be viewed on my website.